Hello everyone, welcome to What If Deku Has the Ability of Blacklight Virus Prototype Part 1. Before we start please go support Dummy wearing a hoodie for writing that awesome fanfic. Now let's begin. Because bio and core country. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Birth date. July 15, 2XXX. Age. 15, 16 years old. Gender. Male. Height. 171, centimeters 57. Hair color. Green. Eye color. Green. Blood type. O. Work entry. Work. Blacklight. Type. Transformation mutation. Description. Formerly blacklight virus, the quirk allows the user to manipulate and control the density of their body mass. The user will have enhanced strength, speed, durability, stamina, regeneration and immunity to all known diseases. Due to the user's ability to manipulate their body mass, the user can create different weapons for combat purposes. Note to self. Limit currently is unknown, as humanity has evolved since Alex Mercer's time, therefore the power and limits of the quirk is unknown. Quirk also appears to have activated due to a Salban soul merge, meaning the main quirk gene is very hard to identify in a scientific standpoint. Drawback. The quirk uses biomass as the body's source of energy. The more abilities use the more biomass the user drains. Consuming or eating protein bars is required to avoid quirk overuse. Abilities. Glide user changes the density of their body that allows the user to travel in mid-air through gliding, used to bridge gaps between buildings or to reach airborne enemies. Sensory powers and thermal vision user gains the ability to sense the surroundings using his enhanced senses, and thermal vision helps the user to locate enemies through their body temperature. Sonar senses upgraded version of thermal vision allows the user to sense their surroundings using not only the temperature of the people around them, but they can also determine which person is quirkless or not, thanks to the different shade of said people. Range. Medium to long. Ball curling wall running user channels biomass into his palms and feet, then they crawl run onto walls. Blade user summons a long blade on their right hand. Allows the user to cut and slice through even the toughest armor quirk vehicles. Range. Short. Claws users transform their hands into deadly, sharp edge claws. Range. Short. Musclemus transforms both users' arms into gray, stone textured musclemus that allows the user to increase melee damage twofold and increases the speed of every strike. Range. Short. Tendrils transforms both users' arms into three-fingered hands composed of strands of biomass, capable of stretching long distances. Range. Medium to long. Amorphist user trades speed for power, shifts biomass to users' forearms to allow deadly, heavy area effect attack, crush and shatter armored vehicles. Range. Short. Shield allows the user to create a shield on their forearm into a durable shield that absorbs damage on impact, preserving the user's health completely until it breaks. Range. Short, but fist user transforms one arm into a thin, flexible, blade-edged arm that can be used to attack at excellent range or whip through entire crowds of villains. Range. Medium long. Consume the user uses the biomass within their body to absorb the blood, flesh or any part of another person's body, allowing them to view the other person's memories. Disguise allows the user to copy the DNA structure of another person, user had copied through consume and replicate the person's physical appearance. This ability also allows the user to copy the quirk of the person's DNA they had copied. Note. When the user uses disguise in changing clothes, the biomass within their body moves and mutates to replicate the properties of the fabric of the clothes they want to disguise in. Devastator is super attack that causes a massive area of damage to their surroundings, at the cost of the user's stamina and hunger. Different devastators in every weapon used. Advice to self. Avoid using move in a narrow space or near civilians. Act leader user utilizes their biomass in summoning a singular or herd of hunters. Hunters vary in types and sizes, hunters regular, brawler hunters, leader hunters, and more to be discovered. Armor alternative to shield, where the user covers their whole body into dense biomass for protection from explosives and gunfire. Status. Haven't awakened yet. Works copied through consume. Shock absorption copied from a USJ Nomu gives the user the ability to reduce the effectiveness of physical blows by absorbing the shocks produced by them. Status. Active, evolved. Shock nullification. Dot. Super regeneration copied from a USJ Nomu allows the user the ability to regenerate any sort of injuries on the user's body, such as missing limbs, at incredible speeds. Status. Active, evolving. Eraser copied from Shota Azawa. Eraser head allows the user to cancel out the quirk of anyone they look at. Status. Active. Op off copied from Minoru Mineta allows the user to produce sticky spheres from their heads that they can pluck painlessly. Boosts tendrils. Status. Passive, altered. Half cold half hot copied from Shoto Todoroki gains the ability to generate ice from the right side of their body and flames from the left side. Boosts users immunity to cold and hot temperatures. Users ice and fire are colored red due to the adaptation to blacklight. Status. Active. 
Bloodcurdle copied from Stain, Hero Killer, formerly Stendhal allows users to temporarily paralyze by ingesting samples of their blood. Boost Consume. Status. Active. Dragon Wings copied from Nomu, Tsubasa allows the user to grow a pair of red, dragon-like wings from his back that allows the user to fly. Status. Active. Transform copied from Himiko Toga allows the user to take the physical form of another person, as well as imitate their voice. The user pulls this off by ingesting the blood of the person they wish to transform into. Boosts Disguise. Status. Active. Unnamed mind reader quirk copied from random villain allows the user to read the minds of another person through telepathy. Evolved. Hive mind allows the user to send their consciousness to a nearby member of their pack, theoretically can use it to infiltrate the mind of those who had consumed the user's blood. Status. Active. Explosion copied from Katsuki Bakugo allows the user to create explosions using their nitroglycerin-like sweat. Boosts glide and increases damage. Status. Active. Redacted unknown user. Redacted unknown user. Redacted unknown user. Combined quirks. Zone erasure erasure plus sonar senses a wide range quirk that disables everyone's quirks, may it be allies and enemies alike. Sticky grenades explosion plus pop off allows the user to create and throw sticky black spheres at a target and detonates it at will. Chapter 1. Meeting Alex Mercer. It's not bad to dream, All Might said in his skeletal form while walking towards the door. He stopped as he reached the door and looked back at Izuku, who had his head looking down. But you need to be realistic, he says as he walks out and shuts the door behind him. Forgive me, young Midoriya. All Might thought as he went down the building. Not looking back at the green-haired boy. As the door closed in front of him, Izuku kept his head down as silent tears flowed down his freckled face. His dream. His only dream was to be a hero. To help and save people with a smile on his face. Just like All Might. Just like the number one hero. Just like the symbol of peace. Just like the person who saved him against the sludge villain. Like the person whose leg he held onto. Just like the person who was injured from his fight five years ago. Just like the person who he told his dream and broke his heart. Just like the person who had told him he can never be a hero without a quirk. His eyes widen as he realized, his. His just like everyone. His just like every single person who doubted and made fun of his dream. His just like every single person who didn't believe that he can be a hero, even without a quirk. His like everyone. His like the doctor sorry kid, but you should probably give it up. His like his mom I'm sorry Izuku, I'm so sorry. His like Hakan take a swan dive off the roof of a building. Hakan's voice lingered on his mind. What kind of friend makes fun of his quirklessness? What kind of friend would beat, burn and hurt him? What kind of friend would tell him to kill himself? What kind of friend would want him to kill himself? Then it hit him. No one. No friend would would make fun of his quirklessness in front of other people. No friend would threaten, hurt, and burn him. No friend would use an explosion quirk on his face. No friend would tell him to kill himself. And no friend would want him to kill himself. Hakan no Katsuki Bakugu is not his friend. He was never his friend. He will never be a friend to him. To him, he was nothing but a pebble on the street. To him, he was nothing but a crybaby. And to him, he was noting but a useless quirkless Deku. Swan dive off the roof of a building. Huh. He looked around his surroundings and realized he was still on the rooftop of the building. He mindlessly walked near the edge of the building and looked down the streets. He saw cars moving, people in different shapes and sizes walking and talking to each other, and heroes doing patrols and casing villains. Take a swan dive off the roof of a building he thought of all the humiliation he received just for being quirkless as he took another step closer to the edge of the building. Take a swan dive off the roof of a building he thought about all the pain and suffering he got in the hands of his friend as he took was one more step closer to the edge. Take a swan dive off the roof of a building he took another step and let his body fall and feel the breeze of the wind as the ground looked closer every second. As Izuku fell closer to the ground, the surroundings began to move slower. Like the gods were making sure he see what he had chosen. But the time slowing down he looked around and saw people began to panic as they saw him falling, some froze, and some ran to find a nearby hero. He smiled sadly. If they only knew that he was quirkless. They would just continue to what they were doing and ignore him like every else in his class does. Hell, his classmates would even be happy when they found out that the quirkless freak jumped off the building. They would celebrate and make it a holiday. Only a couple of feet till he hits the ground, he closed his eyes seemingly accepting his fate and waited to the impact. Where are you, Izuku? Inko Midoriya said as he looked at the clock on the wall. Her son should have been home an hour ago and she is getting worried. Izuku is not the type of student that will stay out late or hang out with his friends unknowing to her that Izuku had no friends since he was quirkless. Maybe there was a villain attack on his way home. And he watched the hero fight. That thought didn't really help in making her feel relieved that her baby hadn't come home yet. 
Ever since Izuku was diagnosed as quirkless and saw how her son felt depressed about not having a quirk, she became protective and paranoid about her son's safety and well-being. Though she doesn't admit it, but she knows that Izuku had became distant and she couldn't blame him. Who wouldn't? After she apologized to him when he asked him if he can be a hero like All Might instead of supporting Izuku's dream, she wouldn't be surprised if she found out that his son jumped off a building. And that thought made her even more nervous. What am I thinking? Calm down, Inko. A ring on the telephone jolted her out of her thoughts. She didn't know why, but she felt scared of answering the call. Please be Izuku. Please be Izuku. Inko took a deep breath to calm herself failing miserably, then shakily picks up the phone and answered the call. H hello. Me Midori residence, I Inko Midori is speaking. Izuku was surprised as he opened his eyes. He was not falling anymore, but he was lying down on the floor. He didn't feel the impact of the fall which confused him. Is that the feeling of dying? Who would have thought death could be painless? He stood up and took a look around his surroundings. He was standing on a building rooftop with debris and surprisingly blood and guts everywhere that almost made him throw up. Almost. The sky was gray and it was raining, but he wasn't getting wet. Some buildings were burning and some collapsed. The place looked like there was a war that happened, and it looked like no one had survived or that's what he thought. So we finally meet. The voice made Izuku jump in surprise. He looked at the direction of the voice and saw the owner of the voice. There a man was facing away from Izuku that slowly turned to look at his direction. He was looking at Izuku from up and down with narrowed eyes. Studying Izuku and it made him take a step back. The man was a tall pale man with grayish blue eyes. He was wearing three layers of clothes. A button-up white shirt with a protruding collar kept partially buttoned, a plain gray hoodie, and a black leather jacket with a red interior, two horizontal white lines on each sleeve, and a red tribal design on the back that Izuku noticed when the man was facing away from him. He also wears plain blue jeans and black shoes. You ah. Uh, he hello. Izuku said failing to sound calm. The man didn't respond and just walked close to Izuku and looked directly in his eyes. Izuku tensed as he saw his grayish blue eyes. It was intimidating yet calming at the same time. It felt familiar but unfamiliar at the same time and that confusing. Izuku Midoriya. The man said making Izuku tense even more. He knows my name. Of course, I know your name. Izuku's eyes widened like saucers, but immediately sweat dropped. I said it out loud, didn't I? The man to his surprise gave a small smile. I am you after all. Those words confused him. Who wouldn't? A guy who looked nothing like him. He clearly sees that the man looks like an American, while well, Izuku is Japanese. He looked at the man with confusion written all over his face. How can he be this guy? The man saw this and grinned. Well, I'm you and you're me, but at the same time I'm not you and you're not me. Those words just confused Izuku even more. Before Izuku could ask what he meant the man interrupted him. I think what I'm trying to say is I'm you in your past life and you're my reincarnation. He said. Izuku simply jaw dropped as all felt clear now. That's why he felt a familiar yet unfamiliar feeling toward the person in front of him. He's is the reincarnation of. Alex Mercer. Nice to meet you. He said holding his hand out for a handshake. Uh, likewise. Izuku took Mercer's hands and shook it while keeping eye contact with his past self. He was amazed to see and meet his past self, and it was really cool to see himself in his past life. Both of them felt something on their hands and quickly looked at their hands. They were both surprised to see black tendrils coming out of Mercer's arm and began to slowly crawl up and attach to Izuku's hands. And. Think about it like how the Venom symbiote move without a host. It then began to sink into Izuku's arm that made him let go of Mercer's hand and looked at his hand. He then felt something spread within his body. It feels weird in a good way. Wow. That felt weird. Izuku muttered, still looking at his hand. Yeah. That was interesting. The hooded man said. He was still contemplating about the event that just happened. Seems like the virus has merged with your soul. He whispered to himself not realizing he said it out loud. Izuku hearing this looked at him incredulously. H you ha. Huh? WWH would be virus. And what do you am mean it me me merged with my ass soul? He said yelled to Mercer who was still in thought. Hmm? Oh right. The blacklight virus. A evolutionary chimeric mutation causing virus that can reproduce only inside the living cells of a biological organisms. It's the virus helped me survive through diseases, physical attacks, and even a nuclear explosion. Mercer said before pausing for a second to see if Izuku is listening. The his amusement was muttering something under his breath which made Mercer sweat dropped. Does this happen often Mercer coughed lightly breaking Izuku from his muttering state. Izuku looked at him and scratched the back of his head sheepishly. Sorry about that. Just a bad habit. Yeah I figured. Nodded Mercer. Though you gotta get that habit out of you if you want to be a hero. Izuku wide-eyed looked at Mercer as if he grew a second arm. He frowned and quickly looked away. H how can I be a hero when I am? Quirkless? 
Mercer cut him off which the boy nodded. He grabbed the boy's shoulders to face him straight in the eye kid, quirk or no quirk if you had enough training, you can be a hero. E, but All Might said he nervously said before he was cut off by Mercer once more. Buck what All Might said why would it matter if he said you can't be a hero. It's not his decision if you want to be a hero and it bucking isn't that bastard Bakugo's decision either. He paused and took a deep breath. He looked back at Izuku who had jumped to the volume of his voice as he released his shoulders and compassed himself. Sorry, what I'm trying to say is if you want to be a hero, then be the hero you always wanted to be. Train and study hard to rub it to their faces that you can be a hero and to prove them wrong. Alex Mercer said to him giving the boy a small smile. B, but I'm. I don't have a quirk. How can I protect people if I can't protect myself? The green-haired boy whispered looking down, remembering the times Bakugo uses his quirk on him and a sludge villain attack. Izuku was helpless without a quirk. If he can't defend himself, how can he defend others? He heard Alex's eye and he looked up to his past self. As I said earlier, if you train your mind and body you can be a hero to defend yourself and other people. As for being quirkless. Mercer smirked as he crossed his arms. Who said you were quirkless? If I remember correctly, the blacklight virus had merged with your soul, and if I'm not mistaken, it already mutated in your body turning itself into a quirk thanks to your mom's X chromosomes in your DNA. And. The virus is infectious and mutated Alex's body mass. I was thinking that since Alex died while still having the virus, I thought that the virus will stay in Alex's soul which will merge with Izuku's and mutate his DNA. That made Izuku's eyes widen. I I have a quirk. I can be a hero. The taller man put his hand on the boy's head, ruffling his curly hair and smiled, yes, Izuku Midoriya you can be a hero, those words that came out of Mercer's mouth filled Izuku with an overwhelming amount of hope, joy, and also filled the space in his heart with the acknowledgement and support that he needed for the last 10 years of his life. Izuku couldn't help himself and tackled his past self in a hug and cried his heart out. But this time it was not a cry of loneliness, anger, hopelessness, helplessness, but a cry of appreciation, joy and hope of becoming a hero. Mercer for his part was surprised of the sudden contact, but hugged the younger boy. He saw that the boy really needed it, and he knew that the boy will become the greatest hero that he will surpass his tormentor and that blonde buff asshole. Mercer also knew that Izuku will be the hero he can never be, and by giving the Viru no, by giving the quirk to the boy he can become the new symbol of hope and redeem him from his past actions that he really regretted in the last second before his death. Oh oh sorry. Sniff so sorry about that. I'm just very happy right now. Izuku said letting go of the hug, drying his the tears on his cheeks and eyes. Mercer just smiled and ruffled his hair. Damn. Can't believe that this cute thing is me in another life. He mused. He was cut off from his thought as Izuku looked at him once again. Anyway, how do I use the virus or quirk you gave me? The boy asked him as he took out a notebook from out of nowhere. Mercer blinked at the display and gave the boy an amused look. Ha. Nerd. Yup, he's definitely me. Mercer chuckled well, you just need to focus on manipulating the mass and weight of the musculus of your body, I think you know what, don't worry about it, since you will have my memories of using it after our souls fully merged with each other. You won't have a hard time using it. He said making Izuku confused and surprised. Fully merge. Didn't our souls already merged? Izuku asked a hooded man while scratching his head. No. It was just the soul with the virus that merged to your soul. I know because I can't feel the power inside my veins anymore. He said looking into his hand and flexing his fingers into a fist. You mean the tingling feeling all over my body the moment the tendrils sank inside my hand? Mercer nodded confirming his statement. So that's how a quirk feels like. He whispered to himself making Mercer chuckle. Yes. Yes, that's how it feels to have a quirk or in my case, a virus. But anyway, we need to merge soul for you to get all, and I mean all my memories. Even the memories of the people I consumed. He then held out his fist, signaling for a fist bump. Izuku looked the hand and looked at Alex. What will happen to you after our soul merge together? He was nervous and Alex can't see it. He sighed and looked at his emerald eyes. I'll probably fade. He saw Izuku took a step back. Look kid. If we don't merge souls, you won't be able to control it before the entrance exam, and possibly you won't be able to wake up in time to participate in the exam, since after we merge souls you'll wake up. Time works different here kid. And if I'm not mistaking it has been a week after you jumped down the rooftop of that building. Izuku's jaw dropped about the revelation. He has been unconscious for a week. It looked like he has just been an hour or two. If he don't wake up now he won't be able to get to the exam. But if he merged souls with he'll fade. He can't take that. He can't take that the first person who believed in him will be fade away and leave him alone. It hurt him. It hurt him more than how All Might crushed his spirit. Thinking of Alex fading in front of him brought tears in his eyes. Come on Izuku. Alex's calm voice broke him out of his thoughts, even if I fade, I'll always be with. 
I'm you and you're me remember? He said making every doubt that was in Izuku's mind disappear. Izuku then gave him a teary smiled and slowly fist bumped with him. There was a quick spark when their fists made contact, but it didn't hurt them. Izuku can feel the tingling sensation coming from his fist climbing his body, while Alex can feel his body getting sucked and exiting his outstretched fist. They then both saw that Alex's body began to fade from down his feet up to his face, as particles began to float his fading form. Before he could fully fade out of existence, Alex gave Izuku one last smile, promise me that you will become the hero that I can never be, he paused and waited for Izuku to answer, and seeing the boy nod he continued. Well then, goodbye and take care of everyone you love and those who you wish to protect. Be the greatest hero there is and I will always be there for you. As that being said Alex Mercer has completely faded. Seeing that Alex is no longer with him, looked up in the sky of his mindscape. After 5 seconds, he suddenly clutched his head using his hands as all, I mean all the memories came in him. Seriously Alex. Not even a waning. When the pain stopped stood up still clutching his head. And then blinked when he heard a voice enter his ear. Welcome to the top of the food chain it was Alex. He couldn't help but smile as he saw from the Alex's memories he said that before getting absorbed by a guy named Heller. Looking more into that memory he realized man that guy was guy was brutal. Kindelak Bakugo. He chuckled at his new nickname for his former friend. So how do I go back? Izuku wondered and cursed himself for not asking Alex how to go back in the real world. However he doesn't need to worry as he felt a pull in his body and after a second he was falling once more. And he was hearing another voice in his ears. It was soft and sounds familiar. The voice was crying and saying something that he couldn't hear clearly. He closed his eyes used his quirk to enhance his hearing to listen to the voice. You what are you saying? Who are you? Wakp. Izuku you're clearly not Alex so who are you? Wake up Izuku wait. Mom. Chapter 2. Waking up. With a quirk, Izuku can hear his mom calling him, pleading for him to wake up. Well, he was awake, but for some reason he didn't open his eyes and just listened to his mom sobs. It made him feel guilty, but he just out of reflex kept his eyes closed. Yes, every time his mom would cry back when he was diagnosed quirkless Izuku would keep his eyes closed and wait for his mom to leave his room to cry himself to sleep. He can't help it. He can't stand seeing his mom's crying face, especially knowing he was the reason of her cries. I'll be waiting, sweetie. So please wake up, Izuku. He heard his mom cry to him before he felt her kissed his forehead. After that he heard footsteps walking away from him and a door opening, then closing. Then there was only the sound of liquid dropping in a bag and a beeping sound coming from a device close to where he was. There he realized that he was in a hospital. He wanted to open his eyes, but another sudden rush of memories flow into his head and it hurt as hell. He once again inwardly cursed Alex for not warning him about the pain. It feels like he was messing with him. As the pain slowly subsided he saw Alex's past, how Alex got his powers. From how he woke up from the dead in a morgue up to the moment when Heller slashed him again and again until he was no longer breathing. Damn his brutal. With the pain gone he felt tired like he had been running a marathon and going back to the starting line to restart the race for 10 more tries. He chose that moment of tiredness to fall asleep, he'll just wake up by tomorrow. Next day, it has been a week since Inko received a call from the hospital that Izuku was took in after falling off a building. It broke her to think that her son would try to end his own life. She almost flooded the whole hospital for crying looking at Izuku's bandaged body. But she couldn't blame her son knowing that he had been in pain after all the pain, mockery and discrimination he received from his peers. If it wasn't for the Mitsuki, Katsuki's mother, she would never stop crying. As to why Mitsuki was also in the hospital is because Katsuki was also admitted in for a completely different reason. The same day Izuku jumped off the building, Katsuki was attacked by a sludge villain that almost killed him if it wasn't for All Might who was passing by. To be honest, Inko didn't give a shit about Katsuki after she found out that he was the one who tormented her son, and she was glad that he was attacked by the villain. Karma is a bitch. But she never said that out loud since Katsuki's mom is her best friend, also since he's Izuku's childhood friend, well at least that's what she thought. She was walking through the hospital's corridor as she remembered the moment where she apologized to Izuku when he asked her if she can be a hero like All Might. She regretted the words that came out of her mouth, and she knew that those same words broke her son's heart which made their relationship to crumble. And because of those words Izuku had grew distant towards her. Inko can admit that she was not really supportive on Izuku's dream, and she wished that she had. If she had told Izuku that he can become a hero like All Might, her son wouldn't be as distant and secretive as he is now. She just wants her son to be safe, but she hurt her son's feelings because of that. She wished that she could turn back time so that she could change her answer on her son's question. But there is one thing to that. She can't. She can't change the fact that she didn't believe and supported her son's dream of becoming a hero. 
she could change the fact that she broke her son's heart and may have caused him to jump off the rooftop. She just hoped that Izuku would be able to forgive him. Izuku. As she enters her son's hospital room, she froze on her tracks on what she saw. Izuku. Is awake. Sitting up looking outside the window, has looked like his deep in thought. Bye Izuku. She shakily called out to her son. Izuku looked at her direction, and at that moment she saw her son look the same, but look different at the same time. He was giving off a different calm and mysterious aura with the same passion. She teared up when her son just looked at her eyes and smiled brightly. After jumping off a building, her son just smiled like it was nothing. Like it was all a dream. Like it never happened. Hey mom. Good morning. Izuku said giving her mom a bright smile. How long have woe he was cut off when his mom tackled him into a bone-crushing hug. Izuku I'm so uh, sorry. I'm sorry I didn't believe in you I'm sorry you jumped off a building. I'm sorry I can't give you a quirk, Inko sobbed in her son's chest as she hugged him tightly like it was the end of the world. Before she could continue she felt Izuku's arms wrapped around her, hugging her back which made her sob more. Izuku didn't said anything and just comforted her mom. When Inko stopped crying, he chose that moment to speak. Honestly, he was still upset of how unsupportive his mom had been. But he knew that he can't stand his mom. Supportive or not, she is still his mom. She will be and will always be the person who love him even in his quirkless condition. It's okay, mom. I understand. I've forgiven you a long time ago. Izuku pats his mom's back making her look at him. I understand why you said those words and I can't blame you. I'll admit I was upset of what you said and hope that you should have at least supported me instead of apologizing for the thing you can't control. He wiped a tear that was falling on her cheek and looked at her directly in the eyes and smiled softly. It's all in the past, all we can do is move forward. Yup, he couldn't stand her. He loved her too much to be upset. Inko hugged her son even closer and cried for a couple of minutes. She calmed herself and that's the time the doctor came in to check on Izuku. Oh. Looks like you're awake. The doctor looked at Izuku who bowed slightly and gave him a smile. He then looked at Inko who broken up from the hug and gave her attention to the doctor. Good thing you're here Mrs. Midoriya. I was about to call you about the test results of young Izuku here. He said as he walked closer to the Midoriya stopping a few feet from the pair. As I said from our conversation last week, it is a miracle that he survived that fall, considering that he fell from a building taller than Mount Lady in her quirk form. And what surprised us as well is when the medic went to the place where your son landed, they were shocked to see your son in a crater, with only having minor injuries and a couple of broken bones. The doctor said shocking both Izuku and Inko. Izuku, because he was sure he would have more injuries, but maybe it's because of his new quirk. Inko, because she didn't know that her son created a crater upon landing. A sea crater. The doctor then opened a folder and looked at its contents before looking back at the Midoriyas. We have made some tests two days ago. And the results are unimaginable. It shows that even after what happened to your son we saw no sign of the injuries, and you said that he's quirkless. Inko nodded while Izuku just stayed quiet. Well you see after some tests and x-rays, we found an extra toe joint on your both off your son's feet, but the DNA tests found an anomaly in his body mass. So you mean? Inko said and unconsciously held Izuku's hands which hold hers as well, comforting her. Does Izu her thought was cut off as the doctor continued, seemingly reading her mind. Yes Mrs. Midoriya. After the fall, I believe your son developed a quirk. An interesting one if you ask me. The doctor said making Inko tear up once more. She looked at Izuku, who was coincidentally looking at her with a look that made her think that he knew he had developed a quirk. He then gave her a smile, a smile that she last saw ten years ago. Before she could ask her son the last words that the doctor registered in her mind. An interesting one if you ask me. She looked back to the doctor. What do you mean an interesting one? She asked the doctor who gave her a serious look. Well you see Mrs. Midoriya, your son's quirk is quite similar to a certain person's ability that had happened in the pre-quirk era. The doctor paused and flipped a page in the file and gave it to Inko, who took it and analyzed the page. There she saw old documents that may look like centuries old now. She saw three pictures. First is a picture of a man in a hood who was lying in a stretcher with blood all over his leather jacket. The second picture shows the same man flying or gliding in the air, releasing what looks to be red gas or fluid out of his hands and feet. And lastly, a picture of the same man carrying a taxi cab on both his arms with black mass tendrils covering his arms. That man is Alex Mercer, aka the prototype. He is known for his codename. Zeus, and he is known to be a carrier of the blacklight virus, the same virus that caused a pandemic in Manhattan in the year 2009. He is known to manipulate his body mass to enhance his physical capabilities and gives him an arsenal of weapons that came in a form of claws, blades, giant fists and a whip-like hand. But these weapons and abilities, he was able to defeat infected abominations and even withstand a nuclear explosion. The last sentence caused the Midoriya's jaws to drop. 
no one, even All Might can't walk away from a nuclear explosion. However, after the explosion he had disappeared with no trace. Rumor says that he was defeated by a person named James Heller, another person with the same abilities. But we are not sure if those are true before the doctor can continue Izuku chose the moment to talk. You um. That rumor is actually true he was defeated by James Heller. He said nervously getting a look from both the doctor and Inko. He took a deep breath and continued. Alex Mercer fraud and was defeated by James Heller by absorbing him to get his powers and memories. Heller absorbed him to destroy all the infected creatures that were causing destruction all around Manhattan to save humanity. He finished releasing his breath that he never knew he was holding. Izuku waited for the doctor's questions, but it was his mother that talked. I Izu, H how do you know that? Inko asked her son still confused about the information. She then saw Izuku looked at her and gave her a soft smile. It's because I'm the reincarnation of Alex Mercer. I was Alex Mercer in the past. He said raising his hands channeling his the black light virus through his hands. Both Inko and the doctor looked at his hand and wide-eyed when black thin tendrils began to sprout out of his palms and wrapped around his fingers, hands, and arm. His whole arm then turned gray with a bulky stone texture. If you're asking how I know it is because I talked to him. He said while flexing his finger while retracting his hands back to its normal form. He looked back his mom and doctor who are still looking shocked about this new feat. He shrugged. I'll explain how I talked to him. After Izuku told them the conversation with Alex Mercer while leaving out the reason why he jumped off the building. He might hate All Might by saying he can't be a hero without a quirk, but Izuku was not that vengeful to talk about the hero's actions to make the two adults' thoughts about the hero change. When he finished telling the story to the adults in the room, they were giving him surprised and shocked looks. And he couldn't blame them. He was shocked and surprised himself. Fascinating. This is an extremely rare case of quirk developing through soul merging with your past self. Well, to be honest your case is the first. The doctor said while jotting down notes on a notepad. But Alex Mercer's soul merging to yours, you get his abilities while eliminating the complications of having the blacklight virus as it mutates with your DNA, transforming it into a quirk with a less damaging drawback. Speaking of which, what are its drawbacks? The doctor asked Izuku who started to think. Before he could talk, they all heard a loud growling sound, and Izuku began to blush. The doctor gave him a warm chuckle. It looks like it uses the food you eat and your stamina as fuel. Why yeah, I guess I am a little hungry and tired right now. Izuku said sheepishly as he rubbed the back of his head. It's true he is starving and tired. The doctor just chuckled and walked towards the door. I'll call for some protein-based food for you replenish the hunger and fatigue you're feeling. I will also give your mom a simple recipe for a protein bar for you. He paused as he reached the door and looked back. You have a strong quirk, young Izuku. You are basically immortal with the hyper-regeneration and durability of yours. Easily rivaling All Might's quirk. If not stronger. I hope you use it properly and responsibly because with a quirk like that you can become the greatest hero that you wanted to be. Said the doctor as he exited the door. Izuku felt proud as his quirk can rival or even be better than All Might's. He felt overjoyed when the doctor said that he can be a hero. Now that he had a quirk he can prove himself to those who made fun of him and doubted his dream, especially Katsuki and All Might. He unconsciously clenched his fist at the thought of those two. He would love to see the faces of those two once he used his quirk in front of them. But he can't for some reason. He doesn't want to show them that he had developed a quirk. He doesn't want to end up like Katsuki, arrogant, reckless, crude and has a freaking ego as tall as Mount Lady. He wanted to be himself. A hero that will be there when you need it and will save you with a smile. He knew he can and will be a hero. He was cut off from his thoughts as his mom held his hand and gave him a teary smile. The doctor was right, Aizu. She said as she sniffed. With your quirk you can be the hero you wish to become. Again, I'm sorry for not believing in you. To make up for it, I will support you in my best abilities. She said hugging Izuku which returned the hug. She felt happy for her son. She would do her best to be the supportive mother she was once 10 years ago. Thanks mom I will do my best to make you proud. I will become the hero that will help and protect people with a smile. Izuku said, like what the doctor said, I am gonna use this quirk properly and responsibly. And to become a hero, I need to enter the entrance exam in UA. His mom nodded at him and placed her hands on his face. Yes, the entrance exam is in eight and a half months. You still have time to train and practice your quirk. By the way, what will you name your quirk? We need to update your quirk registry. Inko asked Izuku curious on what he would name his quirk. Izuku thought for a second then smiled and looked at his mom. I'll call it Blacklight. Time skip, work entry, name. Izuku Midoriya, birth date. July 15, age. 14 years old, gender. Male, height. 171, centimeters 5'7, hair color. Green, eye color. Green, blood type. Oh, quirk. 
Blacklight transformer mutation quirk formerly blacklight virus allows the user to manipulate and control the density of his body mass. User will have enhanced strength, speed, durability, stamina, regeneration and immunity to all known diseases. Due to user's ability to manipulate his body mass, user can create different weapons for combat purposes. Other abilities, glide user changes the density of his boy that allows user to travel in mid-air through gliding, used to bridge gaps between buildings or to reach airborne enemies. Sensory powers and thermal vision user gains the ability to sense the surroundings using his enhanced senses, and thermal vision helps user to locate enemies through their body temperature. Ball curling wall running user channels biomass into his palms and feet, then he crawls run onto walls. Blade short range user summons a long blade on his right hand. Allows user to cut and slice through even the toughest armor quirk vehicles. Claws short range users transforms his her hands into deadly sharp edge claw. Musclemus short range transforms both users arms into gray stone textured musclemus that allows the user increase melee damage twofold and increases the speed of every strike. Theory. With proper training user will possible upgrade musclemus into tendrils James Heller's ability. Amorphous short range user trades speed for power, shifts biomass to user's forearms to allow deadly heavy area effect attack, crush and shatter armored vehicles. Shield short range allows user to create a shield on his forearm into a durable shield that absorbs damage on impact, preserving user's health completely until it breaks. But fist mid long range user transforms one arm into a thin, flexible, blade edged arm that can be used to attack at excellent range or whip through entire crowds of villains. Armor alternative to shield, where user covers his whole body into dense biomass for protection from explosives and gunfire. Consume and disguise unlike Alex Mercer's full body consumption, user only need blood to consume, where user will be able to copy the DNA structure of the owner of blood and replicate it to be able to disguise user into the owner of the blood consumed. Theory. User may be able to not only copy the appearance of the person, but also the quirk of the user. Devastator a super attack that causes a massive area damage to their surroundings at the cost of user's stamina and hunger. Different devastators in every weapon used. Advise to self. Do not use move in a narrow space or near civilians. Act leader still in work user uses a third of his stamina to summon large humanoid attack dogs to fight alongside him. Izuku closed his hero journal after writing his own entry. It's been three days after his talk with the doctor and his mom. After the talk, Izuku and Inko went to register his quirk and to say that the doctor who told him he can't be a hero was surprised was an understatement. The doctor bowed to him while repeatedly apologizing for not thinking before talking. Izuku was happy that the doctor apologized and he forgave him and asked a request to not inform the school principal that he had developed a quirk. The doctor was confused at first but did so nonetheless. Then after that, both mom and son went how and celebrate by eating his favorite dish, katsudan. Remembering that last one put a smile on Izuku's face. He felt happy looking at his notebook, but after a minute he opened his notebook and ripped off his quirk entry and put it in a small box for two reasons. First, is to prevent it from getting destroyed like his last notebook courtesy of Onkatsuki Bakugo. And the other reason is to prevent Bakugo from taking his notebook and finding out he had a quirk. Him having a quirk will make the Pomeranian explode, figuratively and literally. Not that he's scared of getting hurt for hiding his quirk. It's just that he doesn't owe his former friend an explanation, and he doesn't owe him anything. Speaking of Bakugo, he kinda stopped bothering Izuku. Since the day after the quirk registry. Flashback, that morning he went back to school and was surprised that none of his classmates had made fun of him as he entered that classroom. They just looked at him as he entered and went back to what they were doing. It didn't surprise him because the hospital had informed the school about his accident, but not his quirk dot. So they probably don't want to cause trouble too since he just got out of the hospital and began wary of Izuku since he gained a growth spurt, easily rivaling Bakugo's height. Izuku just shrugged off the attention or the lack off to his return and went straight to his seat and started to write the lessons the class had in his absence. It was 15 minutes before the bell when Bakugo and his lackeys entered the classroom. Izuku knew Bakugo entered because for one the whole class began quiet all of a sudden and two that he can feel the blondes or rage directed at him. If he was the same quirkless Izuku that he was weeks ago he would began shaking and stuttering, just feeling the blonde's aura. But after merging with his past self, Alex Mercer, he felt calm, confident and reserved. He felt that not only Mercer's soul had merged, but also his personality, though the muttering is still there, but he is working on it. So that's why he just ignored the killing intent directed at him and continued writing the on his notebook. Akugo to his part looked pissed off when he saw that Deku didn't even show any reaction to the killing intent that he was giving. And to him it looked like Deku didn't even acknowledge the fact that he was even there. This enraged the blonde and started stumping his way towards the green at seat. 
He stood in front of Deku and was about to blast him using the explosion that started popping on the palm of his hands when the green-haired boy started to talk. Trying to use your quirk on me again Bakugo. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Izuku calmly said still writing on his notebook, making everyone in the class tense with a different tone in his voice. Not to mention the lack of stuttering, shaking and cackin in his words. However that didn't stop Bakugo from scowling. What did you say you quirkless nerd? He screamed making the whole class minus Izuku flinch of its volume. Not getting a response, he then grabbed Izuku on the collar of his uniform, wanna say that to me again, Deku. He said yanking the green at closer to him so that he would be face to face with Deku, just to see the nerd not even reacting to his actions which pissed him off even more. Before he could attack the green at, Izuku raised his head calmly and glanced at his palms that was popping with tiny explosions and looked back at Bakugo straight in the eye. The eye contact made the ash blonde teen spine shiver and felt uneasy as he looked at Deku's eyes that was missing the fear and nervousness it had the last time they talked. Hence, it had the look of calmness, confidence and indifference. I said, trying to use your quirk on me again. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Calmly said the boy who was now standing straight making Bakugo's eyes widen as he realized that Deku was now as tall as him. Izuku then grabbed his hand that was on the collar of his uniform and gripped it, making the blonde wince for the strength the quirkless nerd is putting on his hand. Since using quirks in public is illegal. I'm sure you are aware of that law, since you're the best student. After all, you wouldn't want Yue to find out that you use your quirk in public and let alone hurt and threaten a classmate. I would see your name getting blacklisted from UA, heck maybe in all the hero schools here in Japan. Wouldn't want your clean record get marked, would you Kaken? He said which made the explosive teen pale and loosen his grip on Deku's collar as he let go of Bakugo's hand. Izuku looked around and saw the shocked faces of all of his classmates, even their homeroom teacher was shocked hearing the once nervous boy's words. That made Izuku smirk inwardly and took a seat and went back to writing as the bell rung, indicating the start of homeroom. Flashback end. After that, it seems that Bakugo had stopped attacking him. But that never stopped the blonde from throwing insults about his quirklessness and how he is still a Deku. He also told him to not apply to UA since he said that no quirkless Deku will become a hero, which of course he ignored enraging the blonde. Izuku didn't really care what the blonde said and to be honest, he didn't even want to waste time on the blonde since he needs to train his new developed quirk, Blacklight, to get a hang of it once again as he was as Alex Mercer. He was currently laying on his bed staring at his walls that are unsurprisingly lacking too much All Might posters. After he was discharged from the hospital, he removed most of All Might posters and action figures, still feeling bitter about his idol breaking his heart. They're only leaving a single All Might action figure in his Silver Age costume, along with couple of action figures of Endeavor, 13, Best Genist and Edshot. His wall that were once filled with All Might posters now contain rock bands from the pre-quirk era that Alex likes to listen to like Linkin Park and paintings that he created when he got home. The All Might themed carpet and curtain are now changed into simple yet nice to look at carpets with a red and grey color scheme same goes for his curtains. Looking around he fell contented by the new look of his room and went back to looking at his phone as he was searching for a place where quirk usage is allowed. He could try at the school gym since quirks are allowed there, however he wasn't planning to show them, especially Bakugo that he wasn't quirkless anymore. Not until he entered UA for the entrance exam that is. He can't try in his house since he knew that his quirk is more destructive than those explosions that Bakugo releases. So he had no choice but to find a place to train and practice his quirk so that he would do decently and hopefully cause as little damage as his quirk tend to uncontrollable, looking at the doorknob that he broke. Twice. As he swiped up and down for locations that allow quirk usage, he spots a place not far from his house. The Gaba Municipal Beach Park, huh? Chapter 3. Training and Cleaning. The Gaba Beach Municipal Park, Saturday, 5.45 AM. Izuku read the sign as he arrived at the location where he would train his quirk and abilities. He began to walk down the staircase of the Dagaba Beach and looked around the beach junkyard. It was definitely a junkyard. There was piles of piles of junk that ranged from tin cans to even pickup trucks. Yup this is a perfect place to train my quirk he said to himself as he reached the beach. He began to think of the type of training he would do and the abilities he would be practicing to further master them, like how he was back as Alex Mercer. Izuku was cut off from his train of thought when he heard waves crashing to each other and looked up towards the ocean. Wow. I know this place basically became a junkyard, but I could say this place has potential to look beautiful once more. He said looking at the clear blue ocean with awe. Izuku felt relaxed and saddened to see a beautiful sight covered by piles of rubbish and no hero even made a move to clean the place. Then again he realized that heroes like Mount Lady only want fame and endeavor just focus on capturing villains. All Might could have cleaned the beach, but with his condition, Izuku wouldn't be surprised. With that thought he looked at all the piles of junk and back to the ocean. There he made his decision. 
If no one wants to do it, then I will. He said as he used disguise to change into his plain t-shirt with the word t-shirt and black gym shorts. Izuku practices disguise frequently and found it as a very useful ability to have and didn't blame Alex for for using it in infiltrations and hiding against the Gentech operatives. It was very easy to change clothes as long as he wore the clothes for a couple of hours to let the biomass absorb the components' properties of the clothes so that he can replicate the components using his biomass. It confused him how the fabric gets absorbed, but hey, he gets to change faster. Who wouldn't like to change faster right? At that same time, all the female population in the world sneezes. Izuku began to pick up the smaller junk and garbage like tin cans, soda bottles, ice cream cups, and place them in a plastic bag that he always brought in case he needs to go get groceries. He picked up glass shards from shattered bottles and car windows. He continued picking up the small junk for hours and came back and forth from the beach to the nearest convenience store to buy garbage bags, since the plastic bags were filled up fast and there is a whole beach filled with junk. He placed the garbage bags filled with smaller junk up the staircase of the beach and lined them up for the garbage truck to get them. He wiped his sweat rolling on his chin and looked at the beach. It would take me a month or two just to get the smaller ones out of here. Izuku thought as he picked up another garbage bag full of plastic bottles and soda cans and took it to the staircase. An hour later and he removed the smaller junk from the first pile of a hundred piles of junk. He began to smile as he saw that from just a pile of small junk, he can say that the beach had changed. Small change but it's a start. He began to walk home while wiping his sweat using a towel, not seeing a pink-haired girl with green-yellow eyes that looked like crosshairs looking at him first and to the pile of junk with interest. Oh. These parts will be good for creating my new babies, the girl thought as he knelt down to grab a part of a broken television, forgetting about the green-haired boy. That night after dinner, Izuku leaned back to his chair as he had just finished writing a new entry about Mount Lady. He stretched and placed his hands at the back of his head. He began to think about what he did in the beach. Cleaning the beach was not that bad, since he was doing it as an act of heroism and training. The beach needs a makeover to make it look like it wasn't a junkyard and more of a beach. And Izuku was willing to spend a month or two just make it look better than its current state. Because that's what heroes do. However, a thought began to enter in the Greenette's mind. What will he do after he cleaned the beach within two months? What will he do for the next six months? Then it hit him. He had no plan after cleaning the beach. He pulled his side drawer and took out his quirk entry. He read and analyzed his skills. There he saw offensive, blade, claws, hammerfist, whipfist, musclemus and devastator, defensive, armor and shield, mobility, glide, wall curling and wall running and reconnaissance, enhanced senses, thermal vision, consume and disguise, and still needs work, tendrils and pack leader. As he read all of his abilities, in a separate paper he began to write on what to do to master the abilities once more. After in 30 minutes of writing the ways to master them, he lay down on his bed mentally exhausted. He found ways to use the skills he already know to use such as musclemus and claws and leave ones he needs to study more, such as consume, tendrils and pack leader for UA when he gets in. Yes is confident that he will be able to get in. Like Bakugo, Izuku also aced the UA mock exams. But Bakugo doesn't need to know that. It would make the blonde teen furious, not that Izuku cared, but it is such a drag to listen to ex-bloody boys rant about Izuku being a Deku and he can't be a hero without a quirk blah blah blah. All that shit. As for the fighting style, he saw in Alex's memories that he consume a street brawler when he first got the virus, that's where he learned how to fight. So, Izuku wouldn't need to go find a dojo to learn how to fight from scratch. Learning a fighting style just from your past self's memory seems to be cheating, but it's okay. He was quirkless for 14 years and suffered so much pain and stress. Izuku won't bother taking a shortcut in mastering his quirk if he wants to catch up with his peers. Just wait till the entrance exams, Bakugo. I'll make you eat your words. Izuku thought before drifting to sleep. He had a long day tomorrow. The next day, Agaba Beach Municipal Park, Sunday, 5.30 a.m., Izuku woke up and took a quick shower before going to the dining room. He ate breakfast that was already served since his mom had an early shift from her part-time job. After eating he washed the dishes before going outside for a jog to the beach to continue his cleaning and training. It took him 20 minutes to get to the beach. When he arrived he began removing the junk while channeling and adjusting the density of his biomass on his legs as he sped towards the piles of junk to start his training. It was one of the tricks he thought to make himself faster and to help his kicks become stronger. His theory was proven true when he crashed face first into the pile, making a loud sound that made the nearby birds flew. He quickly stood up to check if he got injured and was right when he saw his right arm had blood on it but no wound to be found. Huh? Looks like my regeneration really is enhanced. Izuku thought as the blood on his hand began to seep into his skin, giving him a tingly feeling. 
After making sure he had no other injury, Izuku began to look around and saw a large freezer without one doors a couple meters away from him. He would use that as a training dummy to check how strong he can punch with his new quirk. Musclemus Izuku thought and started channeling black light on his arms, and black tendrils began to burst out his pores and covered the entirety of his arms, making him flinch slightly because of the sudden tingling feeling in his body. As the black tendrils fully covered his arm it began to bulk up and turn into a gray stone texture. His hands felt harder and heavier, but as strong and heavy as the hammer fist. He began to walk then sprint towards the freezer. He hocked his right arm to give the object a punch. When his punch landed the freezer was crushed like a soda can that got hit by a stone and flew a couple of meters near the ocean. Izuku's jaw dropped with the force of his punch. He looked at his arm then to the freezer and back to his arm. A smile began to creep into his face as he looked around at the piles of junk. This is going to be fun he said in his mind as his hand changed into claws. And that is all for today. Class dismiss. Izuku's science teacher said as he collected his things and left the class. The students began to stand up and gather their belongings as they made their way home. Our green-haired protagonist stood up and began to put away his belongings into his bag. It has been two weeks in his training cleaning session in the beach junkyard, and Izuku can proudly say that he had cleaned a fourth of the junk and destroyed most of the broken appliances there using his offensive abilities. He found a way to lower the power of his punches and kicks by channeling small amounts of biomass on his arms. And. Kindalikofa, but cooler LMAO. With lower biomass on his arms as he transformed them into the offensive, his transformed arms would look thinner, but still having the known features for example, his claws would look shorter, and his hammer fist and musclemus would look smaller and smoother. As he slung his bag on his back and began to walk towards the exit off the classroom, his path was blocked by the one Katsuki Bakugo and his two lackeys. He looked at the blonde who looked pissed for some reason. Can I help you, Bakugo? Izuku asked the blonde with raised eyebrows. He was not in a hurry, but he had a lot more important things to do than be in front of Bakugo. You still trying to go to UA, Deku? Bakugo asked in a growl while glaring daggers at Izuku who didn't respond. I would advise that you don't waste your time trying to go to UA, because no quirkless Deku like you is getting accepted to UA. He continued as he turned around walking away from Izuku with his lackeys following him while snickering. So what if I'm quirkless? Izuku said in a bored tone making the blonde teen stop in his tracks and turned at him with narrowed eyes. When Bakugo saw his blank expression, the blonde scowled and yelled. What did you say you quirkless piece of shit? He began stomping his way towards Izuku who didn't even flinch as sparks of nitroglycerin began erupting on Bakugo's palms. I think I didn't hear you clearly. Mind saying that to me again. Izuku sighed and looked straight at the blonde's eyes I said, so what if I'm quirkless? That's my problem not yours. He said still looking at the other teen's eyes who still wore a scowling face. And so what if I'm applying for UA? It's my choice not yours. And if you're worried how I'm gonna pass the practical test. Well. He said as he walked past them and stopped without looking back at the trio. That's for me to know and for you to buck off. He said with a smirk and walked off leaving Bakugo and his lackeys with angry and shocked expressions. Somewhere near Mustafu. You say he's a second year student turning third year in eight months in UA. Toshinori Yagi, All Might, in his skeletal form asked someone on the other side of the line. He just got out of the grocery store when his phone ringed. Looking at the caller ID, he saw his old sidekick calling him. Yes All Might. His name is Mirio Tagata. Hero name. Lemillion and his quirk is called permeation, which grants him the ability to phase through physical matter. A strong quirk, and if he gains one for all, he would surpass me and possibly you as well. Mirai Sasaki, also known as Sir Night Eye. Quirk. Foresight. I think he is a good candidate to be your successor, since he is an optimistic kid and makes the people around him feel safe. And with his body being already having muscles, he would very much fit being the next symbol of peace. He said in a confident tone, making him sound like he was right and was never wrong. The boy they were talking about is Mirio Tagata, a second-year high school student who is studying in UA in the hero course. They are talking about All Might pass his quirk, one for all, a stockpiling quirk that becomes stronger as it is passed from one generation to another, to the said boy. All Might was skeptical about passing down Ofa to Mirio, but Sir Night Eye was persistent in choosing Mirio to inherit his quirk and let All Might retire as a teacher in UA's hero course. At first, All Might would usually reject this straight on. But seeing that there was no other candidate to inherit Ofa, he would consider passing the quirk to this Mirio kid. Hmm. That kid sounds promising. All Might said thoughtfully. Okay. I'll see for myself if he is worthy of inheriting my quirk. I promise to you, Tashinori. He is more than worthy. I am confident that he is. Sir Knight I said sternly, but All Might can hear that the man was smiling through the phone. Before All Might could respond, a loud bang was heard from a distance. 
All the people around was panicking and running away from the source of the explosion. A villain attack. I'll call you back, Mirai. He quickly said and hung up, not waiting for Mirai to respond. He ran towards an empty alley and transforms into his muscle form and began to run towards the crime scene. Within three meters he jumped, don't fear, why? Because he landed in front of the villain, the same villain that Mount Lady fought who apparently escaped, who visually flinched. I am here, that's for me to know and for you to buck off. PFFT. Izuku snickered as he remembered the look on Bakugo and his lackey's faces. They look ridiculous and he wished that he had a camera. He was walking home from the bookstore to buy a book about a certain topic in algebra. He was studying not only for the entrance exams, but also for his algebra class. Izuku may be confident in his skills when it comes to book smarts, but algebra is a different subject. It's way too hard to be called a subject in school. Detroit smash a loud voice said which made him stop walking when he heard the voice, knowing who it belonged to. He looked at the direction of the voice and saw a group of people surrounding what looks like a villain attack, and there stands out a tall, muscular man with blonde hair and blue eyes, All Might. Izuku saw the number one hero holding the same villain he saw Mount Lady and Kamui Woods capture on the day where he was attacked by the sludge villain, where All Might had told him he should give up on his dream of becoming a hero. It's not bad to dream, but you need to be realistic. He clenched his fist with a memory flashing in his mind. He may still adore the man for his heroic actions, but he can't look at him at the same admiration as he used to do. Well who wouldn't? If your idol, hero and source of happiness was the one who would shatter his already broken heart. Even the fanboy hero Itaku, Izuku did change his view of his so-called idol. He was cut off his musings when he saw All Might look in his direction with wide eyes and a guilty look in his eyes. Young Izuku. The hero thought looking at the green-haired kid. It had been a long time since he last saw the boy, and he was surprised to see that the boy was no longer the same scrawny kid he left in the rooftop of the building. The kid was now taller, between 5'6 or 5'7, and he can see from his uniform that he had developed muscles. He was about to approach the boy when he suddenly saw his eyes. His eyes. His eyes that once had a look of admiration and curiosity were now replaced with calmness, indifference and little. Hate making him flinch a little. The boy noticed this and inwardly snorted and patted himself on the shoulder for intimidating the number one hero. After 10 seconds of staring at each other, Izuku looked away and started walking home not looking back at the blonde hero. He was planning on making a sketch for his hero costume, just in case he got accepted which he will when he got home. He thought about the same as Alex Mercer's attire when they met. Same leather jacket and pants, but changing the color of the hoodie with a forest green color and changing the shoes to his usual red shoes, but with straps. It may not be practical for a hero to use leather jackets, but it was stylish, and he was sure someone will also use leather jacket in their hero costume. Somewhere in Japan, a guy with blonde hair with black lightning and a purple-haired girl with an asymmetrical fringe sneezed wildly. He was stopped in his musings when he felt someone bump into him. He heard an annoyed but a soft sorry as the person who bumped him walked away. He also heard the person saying something like damn you, Shinji it was supposed to be my day off. When he looked at the place where the person had bumped him, he saw a wallet and picked it up. He knew it belonged to the person who bumped him. He looked inside, read the name and the ID, and quickly ran toward the person to give the wallet back. Hey miss I think you dropped your wallet. He shouted as he was running towards the person who was a girl female. The woman turned to stop and looked at Izuku's direction with an annoyed expression, but instantly softened when she saw him. The woman had round face, purple eyes with white pupils, and has elegantly long eyelashes. Her hair was voluminous creamy blonde hair and had them curled and flowing down her face. She was wearing a fitted purple t-shirt under a brown winter jacket with fur on the hood, fit denim pants folded up and heeled tan sandals. Beautiful. Is all he can say to describe the lady in front of her. He noticed a blush on the woman's face and mentally smacked himself, knowing he said that out loud again. Um. I think this is yours. Izuku said as he handed the wallet to the lady who took it and smiled at him. It mesmerized him and he felt his face heat up. Thank you. She said as she bowed slightly and turned away not waiting for his respond. You're welcome. He said as the lady walks away and he too, turned to go home. While walking, he thought of the lady and smile. She was beautiful, but she seems familiar. He just couldn't say where she saw her. All he can remember is her name. You take Yama. He said as he took a turn. Chapter 4. Crossing paths with a hobo. In the shore of the Dagaba Beach Municipal Park, you are able to see a green-haired teen, Izuku Midoriya, sitting on the white sand, admiring the view of the sea, as the sound of waves crashing into each other and distant birds can be heard in the background. It took him three months to gain bigger muscles and abs an. Izuku post nine months training in canon, though he hides it under his baggy clothes. He wouldn't want to be noticed for two reasons, one. He doesn't want Bakugo screaming at him for training his body and will tell him it was useless because he's nothing but a quirkless Deku, which is annoying. And two. 
He doesn't want the attention, he may be more confident than he was back, but people giving him too much attention is uncomfortable in his point of view. It had been five months of his training cleaning in the beach, and he had mastered all most of his offensive abilities, with the exceptions of the Devastators, Tendrils and Pack Leader in different reasons. The Devastators causes too much damage in his surroundings, and it is risky to use it in a public place, even if the beach allows quirk usage, he would risk destroying a quarter of the beach just to try out the move. The Tendrils and Pack Leader causes too much stamina, and the last time he attempted to use these moves, he fell into unconsciousness. He had to ask for his mom to make more of those protein bars the doctor made and request to add more protein for his quirk to avoid exhaustion and getting unconscious. But in the five months, Izuku had also mastered his armor, shield and disguise consume with the help of Mei Hatsum, a UA support course aspirant who he met four months ago, and she helped him in his defensive training, also promising him to make him a voice-canceling face mask to help with his muttering. He gave a soft chuckle remembering the first time they met. Flashback, late Izuku thought as he morphed his right hand into a large curved dagger the size of his whole body minus his head. It was black in color of the whole blade and red vein-like lines on the dull end of the blade where it is connected to his arm. He looked at it first and noticed it looked different and was heavier than the last time he used it. Looks like it upgraded. He thought and just shrugged as he turned to the direction of the unlucky object that was about to get destroyed, a grandfather clock. He began charging to the object with his blade hanging back as he ran. As he gets close, he jumped and began rotating his body midair to perform a spinning slash to the clock. As he seemingly passed through the object, he landed on one knee with his blade still behind him, outstretched. Izuku then looked slowly at the grandfather clock, which upper part began sliding down slowly separating to its lower half. He was smiling in the result of his attack, but made a mental note to lessen the biomass in the dull edge of the blade. He almost lost balance midair, and he would have landed face first on the sand. As he was admiring his work, he did notice a pink-haired girl standing behind him looking at his bladed arm and the grandfather clock. So you're the one who's been cleaning this place and destroying my supplies. The girl suddenly said making Izuku jump a bit almost hitting the girl with his blade if he didn't retract his quirk back. The girl looked at him with a grin. Now that they had distance between them Izuku saw what she really looked like. The girl was short probably between 5'2 or 5'4 but has quite a mature build. She has shoulder length, salmon pink hair and thick dreadlocks. She is wearing a plain black tank top that helped emphasize her breasts, which made his face redden with workshop coveralls tied to her waist, fingerless gloves, and has a steampunk goggles resting on her head. But what caught Izuku's attention was her eyes, they were wide and slopped upwards with some notably long upper eyelashes, there are eyes as green-yellow with a cross in the center, making them look somewhat like scope lenses. Her eyes must be connected to her quirk. He mused, that was an amazing move you did there. The girl said walking straight to the damaged grandfather clock and took out a plastic bag out of nowhere and took the some gears and parts of the clock. Izuku blushingly diverted his eyes when he saw her bend down and her breast bounced. Why yeah, thanks. What are you doing here anyway? Izuku asked as the girl looked at him. Oh. Me. I was here to get some parts for the baby I am making. She said as she went to a pile of junk and pulled out a broken microwave and a hairdryer. The baby. Izuku sputtered out confused and shocked at the girl's statement. Yup I've been working on making a rocket boots and halfway finishing it, but I need to find some useful parts in creating a heat regulator and where to find parts, but here. She said as she placed the microwave and hair dryer on a pickup truck at the top of the staircase. Oh she means inventions. But for some reasons, many of the parts I need were shattered, crushed, folded and made into a disc, and you seem to be the one responsible. She said looking back at him still smiling. Oh oh, sorry about that. I was just training and practicing my quirk. You see, I just got my quirk one month ago, and I saw this place as a perfect place to practice my quirk for the UA entrance exams, and I kinda want to clean this place to make it beautiful once more. He said bowing his head. Nah, it's okay. I already got that part there in the truck. She said pointing at the direction of the truck as faced him. I'm Mei Hatsum by the way. Future CEO of Hatsum Enterprises Mei said grinning widely. I'm Izuku Midoriya. Nice to meet you. The green-haired boy said smiling at the girl. So you're an inventor, Hatsum? He asked as Hatsum began walking to the pile of junk and tried to pull out a broken Bluetooth speaker. Yup I'm an inventor alright. I'm going to apply for UA to enter the support course so that my babies can get recognized and all the famous hero support companies will buy my babies so that heroes would use my babies and I will become the best inventor in the world. She said while taking out all the components from the speaker and placing them in a box that he took out from who knows where. Izuku observed her and gave her a look of admiration. She's so straightforward and she knows what she want to do in the near future. Wait. Did she said she was also applying for UA? Wait. You're going for UA too? 
He asked her loudly making her flinch slightly. He noticed her reaction and blushed slightly. So sorry, I just got excited. So you're going to UA too, huh? I'm also going for UA, in the hero course that is. He said sheepishly. When she heard that he was also going for UA, Hatsume turned her head towards Izuku so fast that Izuku would have swore he heard a bone crack. Hero course, you say. That's perfect you she said pointing at him, whatever your name is will be my key into being the best inventor in the world, you will be the first person to use my babies and show the world how great of an inventor I am, she said, and cackled loudly making Izuku sweat drop when she forgot his name, but before she could talk again the boy cut he off. Um? Sorry Hatsune, but I think I can't use your babies. He said as he scratches his head. She looked at him and narrowed her eyes making the green at flinch. What do you mean you don't want to use my babies? Do you know how great they are? Do you know how before she could continue, Izuku cut her off again. No I mean I didn't say I don't want to use you babies, it's just that I can't use them without breaking them unintentionally. He paused to see let her calm down. When she did he talked once more. You see, my quirk is called blacklight. It lets me manipulate control the density of my body mass. It also allows me to transform my forearms into weapons like the blade that I used earlier. The biomass in my body also absorbs the atoms in my clothes, making it easy for my to change using my quirk. If I for example were to wear a bodysuit that you created, I would unintentionally damage or destroy it with my quirk making it hard for me to use support items. He explained and panted. He got tired of just explaining his quirk. Izuku then looked at Hatsume and saw that she was downcasted, which made him guilty. Be but if you really want my help, I could give you a hand in creating new babies. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. He said still looking at her and sighed in relief when he saw her smile wide. Well, he wasn't really lying on being a scientist. Alex was a scientist on his time, and he was Alex's reincarnation so technically he was also a scientist. Well, I look forward working with you um she said holding out her hand while trying to remember his name. He sweat drop once again but took her gloved hand and gave her a smile. Izuku Midoriya. And I look forward working with you as well. He said as he shook her hand. Flashback end. After that, he and Hatsune worked together in creating her babies and Izuku testing the durability of the babies they make. Even though Izuku wasn't really sure of being a scientist, he was surprised when he caught up in the inventing with Hatsume and found it easy. Probably Alex kicking in again. Looking back at the time he spent with Hatsume, he found inventing with the pink-haired girl fun and entertaining sometimes, especially when a baby blew up in front of her, covering her face with ash. Sure, she may be eccentric and doesn't think of what she say to others. But most of that was basically her having no friends to talk about her babies and being isolated for her extreme like of inventing. Just like him. But in his case, him being quirkless, his like of being a hero and his notebook full of hero stuff. However, that is slowly changing since he had a quirk. Only time can tell. He is now currently walking the streets thinking about the training he did for the past months. Meeting Hatsune was a blessing in disguise. Because of her frequently going to the beach, he began training his defensive abilities, and if it wasn't because of the explosions her malfunctioning his shield and armor would have been hard to master, since he had no way of testing its durability, and he would never ask help from Bakugo, since he didn't want to reveal his quirk yet until he got in UA. And even if he revealed his quirk to the blonde, there is chance in hell that the Pomeranian would help him train for UA. There is only three months left before the entrance exam, but he doesn't want to waste time. Looking back at his Mavisit, he still have to train his wall running wall curling. His glide was not as hard since he kind of used it too often to either jump towards the target or land safely after an explosion, courtesy of Hatsum's babies. It was actually fun to use, but he kinda freaked out when he saw a red liquid coming out of his hands and legs as he glide. He examined it, and he found out those were pressurized blood that lets him propel from through the air and disappears in thin air after being released from his body. His consumed disguise, devastators, tendrils and pack leader is still non-existent since he reserved those moves for UA. He was not going to use those more complex and destructive moves without supervision of a pro hero. As he walked towards home, he noticed an old building which looks like an old warehouse. Izuku also noticed that the doors of the entrance is broken. He took a step closer to the entrance and peek inside. What he saw made him widen his eyes. There he saw was really an abandoned warehouse where there was a lot of crates, old forklifts and dust all around the place. Looking around he saw that the walls of the warehouse were covered with cobwebs and has pipes sticking out of the ceiling. This place looks like I can train my wall curling and wall running here. Seemed that this place allows quirk usage. He walked towards the wall and started to summon his quirk on his palm, making it look like a weaker version of the hammer fist, and placed it on the wall surface, making it crack but not destroy it completely. He grinned and nodded. It settled then. I'm gonna train my wall curling and wall running here. 
The thaw as he removes his hand off the wall and exits the building, not noticing a black-clad figure with a scarf that looks like loose bandages sleeping on top of a crate. As Izuku exits the building, he went straight home as it was already late noon, and he still needs to study for an exam they will be having tomorrow. The next day, with Bakugo. Buck that test was bucking hard who the hell needs algebra and destroying villains anyway, thought a mentally exhausted Katsuki Bakugo as he walks in the mall toward the arcade. He just got out of school after a monthly exam that his teachers do in order for them to hone their brains as a preparation for those who would want to go to UA. Which are him and Deku. Deku? He gritted his teeth as he remembered how calm the bastard had been after his return from an accident. It pissed him off how calm and confident the nerd was during the test, and noticed how Deku was the first one to finish his test before him. Itsuki will admit that when it comes to academics he and Deku were on the same level. There were even times where they were tied in the top spot in the school ranking. But that never bothered him since most of the times he has better grades than the quirkless loser. But that doesn't change the fact that Deku, the quirkless loser, the person who trembles on the side of Katsuki and can't talk back to him, the pebble on his road, was starting to become a boulder in Katsuki's way that seems to block him in his way on becoming the only student of Aldera Middle School to enter UA. Sure, the entrance exams will be hard one for a quirkless loser since there was a portion where they need to use their quirk, but looking at how confident Deku was in applying for UA makes Katsuki wonder if he had a way to pass the tests. How will he even pass the entrance exam if he doesn't have a quirk? He's just wasting his time and trying to be like me. He'll never be past the exam, but Katsuki clenched his fist as he thought. He was sure that Deku won't be able to pass the test without a quirk, but something tells him that the loser has a way. And knowing how smart the bastard is pissed him off even more. He was cut off of his stupor when he arrived the arcade. He tried to calm himself tried and just tried to enjoy the day. He'll deal with Deku next time. Next time for sure. With Izuku. Okay. Ow. Maybe I should hold. Onto the wall whenever. I want to stop running. Ow damn that freaking hurts. Izuku said rubbing his back that was aching after falling off the 25 feet wall he was climbing. After the test that Izuku thought was really easy, he quickly went back to the abandoned warehouse and used disguise to change into his gym clothes to practice wall curling and wall running. He immediately tried wall curling when he reached the wall and found out that he was able to move in a slow pace as he climbed the wall, but he didn't mind it. Izuku already know that it was slow to use wall curling, using the memories from Alex's past of course, since it requires a lot of biomass and stamina to stick to walls without falling. It may not be his favorite move to use, but it was good for infiltration missions for the future, so it's still useful. Bull running on the other hand however was tricky. It was hard for him to master it because the move requires the user to use the same trick he used for glide, where he release pressurized blood on his legs and feet to allow him to move up fast and balanced, as if he was running horizontally. The problem was he always forget to use his hands to hold onto the wall whenever he tries to stop to look at his distance from the ground. He fell down seven times now, and that slightly pissed him off. Izuku sighed putting his frustrations on the back of his head and calms himself. After calming himself he looked up the wall. Okay Izuku. One more time. He said to himself and ran up the wall once more, in his mind remembering to use his hands if he stop. Near the warehouse, a black clad man wearing yellow goggles with a long scarf that looked like bandages with tired looking expression, was sprinting on the rooftops. He was currently chasing a thug that attempted to rob a convenience store as he was passing by. Said man is Shota Izawa, Aka as the Eraser Hero. Eraser Head. Underground pro hero and a teacher in UA, well he was before he expelled his whole class for some reasons, and he will become a teacher again after the entrance exams. That is if he don't expel his soon-to-be class. Back to him chasing the thug. He is getting close to the thug and ready to scarf and quirk when the thug made a right turn and ran inside the abandoned warehouse where Izawa was sleeping yesterday. To why he was sleeping there, he had a long patrol on the night and ended up sleeping there from 4 am to 7 pm. Ridiculously long but it was a nice sleep. Away from noises which is caused by a certain loud blonde he knew very well and wish he didn't. As he entered the warehouse, he saw the thug unconscious on the ground, but what surprised him was the fact that there was a boy, not older, that 16 sitting on top the thug while rubbing his head in pain. Man, I can't believe I forgot to hold onto the wall again. The green-haired boy said not noticing the unconscious man under him. The boy then looked at him and widened his eyes. Oh oh hello sir. What can I do for you? The boy politely asked trying not to freak out to see another hero up close. You can get off the thug that you sitting on right now so I can take him to the police officers. He said in a tired voice. The kid looked at him with a confused expression and looked down. When he saw the unconscious thug, he jumped and leapt away from the thug while sputtering words so fast making a rapper run for him money. Azawa on his part hid a smirk under his scarf and looked at the boy with amusement. 
before he could talk, he noticed at his peripheral vision the condition of the walls and saw that there were cobweb-like dents and craters on the floor. From what he saw the kid had been practicing his quirk. So, you've been training your quirk huh, kid? The older man asked still looking at the dents on the wall. You know it's illegal to use your quirk in public, right? He noticed the boy tense and looked down on his feet. Why yes sir. The boy answer, but before Izawa could say anything the boy continued. But I need to train and master using my quirk before the UA entrance exam. Azawa pointed out the emphasis on the need and it made his eyebrows raise. He didn't say anything making it a way to say go on for the boy to continue. The boy took a deep breath and looked at the man. You see sir, I just got my quirk a couple of months ago through soul merging. As the boy explained his story, Azawa felt mixed emotions, impressed because of the boy's determination in becoming a hero and for the fact that he was the reincarnation of the Alex Mercer, saddened because of the boy's pain and how he was treated when he was quirkless and furious not at the boy but to the kid named Katsuki Bakugo and All Might. He would took note to personally deal with a Bakugo kid when he got accepted into UA. He would make sure to put the kid to his place and give him a reality check. All Might, he never really liked the guy. Yes, he may be a great hero, but the fact that he brush off and crush a kid dream, not knowing if the kid was suicidal was a red flag. And he know that the man was going to be a UA teacher, and Azawa was not happy about that. All Might didn't qualify as a teacher, and making him the teacher of future heroes can spell disaster. Azawa was cut off from his stupor when he heard the thug groan, and quickly used his scarf to apprehend the thug before he escaped. He then looked at the boy who has been quiet for some time now. He then walked towards the boy and placed a hand on the boy's shoulder. I'll be going kid. Good luck on the entrance exams. He said and turned around to leave. But before he could exit the building, Azawa looked back at the boy who was watching him leave. By the way, what's your name kid? He asked with a bored expression. Izuku sir. Izuku Midoriya. He said as he straightened up. Azawa gave him a small smile. I'll be waiting for you in the hero course, Midoriya. He said and quickly leaving the building. Izuku to his part was shocked. Who knew he was talking to a UA teacher and one from the hero course. He had told the man his story and he felt like a weight was taken away from his shoulders. He began to walk to the direction where he placed his bag as he remembered the man's last words. I'll be waiting for you in the hero course, Midoriya. Those words made a smile creep onto his face. The man who he forgot to ask the name, possible a UA teacher, had told him that he will wait for Izuku to get into UA, to be specific in the hero course. He felt his heart swell and he smiled wider because he had another reason to pass the entrance exam. To become part of the hero course to meet the man who somehow believed that he can pass the exam. And he will. Izuku began to walk to the exit, but before he could completely exit the building, he looked back at his work dents and crater and nodded. In a couple of months, would be taking the entrance exams. And at that time, he will no longer be a quirkless loser, and he will make sure he passes the exam and get into UA. I will pass the entrance exams, and I'll become the hero I always want to be. A hero that saves and protect people with a smile he announced to no one in particular and left the area. He was walking quietly towards home, not noticing Azawa on the rooftop of a building. I'm sure you will, Midoriya. I'm sure you will. He said as he walked off. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.